All right. So what wasn't trending today on Twitter? At least I didn't see it trending on Twitter, and I was on Twitter a few times. Um, uh, what is today an anniversary of, uh, and, and an important anniversary, and I think uh, 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 an important anniversary that'll go down in history as a uh, as important uh, in the fight for liberty and the fight uh, for freedom, uh, and um, and I, you know, I don't know if uh, some of you know this because I saw it mentioned in the chat earlier. No, it wasn't midway. Wasn't the Six Day War? I don't think so. Although it's close. Sometime now in June, I think it's a Six Day War. But no, I wasn't thinking of midway. I wasn't thinking of Six Day War. Um, something more, in some ways, more more significant, more horrific, more negative, more sad. Um, and something that has definitely shaped the country's uh, future and present. Yeah, Tiananmen Square. Uh, 33 years ago, uh, Deng Xiaoping ordered the tanks um, into uh, Tiananmen Square, um, and not only uh, bringing the tanks in, but ordered the, uh, the troops, the soldiers, to fire on the tens, maybe hundreds of thousands of students. We remember it as a Tiananmen Square, but really, it's much more than Tiananmen Square. There were, there were crowds of young uh, students seeking uh, greater freedom, seeking greater democracy, seeking a greater uh, say in the future, uh, uh, standing for liberty. Uh, there were hundreds of thousands of such young people all over China. Uh, they were in, um, in all the major cities and some of the smaller cities in China. We only know Tiananmen Square because that's where there were some journalists. We know Tiananmen Square because of the famous pictures of Tank Man. But, but what is interesting is we have very little photographs of the slaughter that followed. We have um, uh, no real firsthand detailed accounts of the massacres that the Chinese soldiers inflicted on their own people. The, the, the thousands, maybe the tens of thousands, we don't even know uh, how many people died uh, that day and the days that followed as the Chinese regime decided in the name of one party rule, in the name of the greater good, in the name of the common good, in the name of na uh, Chinese nationalism um, and Chinese greatness to crush, to crush the spirit, the dream, and the lives uh, of young Chinese students. Uh, again, thousands, if not tens of thousands, died that day. Uh, more than that, I mean, not more than that, but on top of that, I, I, I literally think the spirit of a whole generation of Chinese was crushed. Uh, the, the, the liberty, the, the freedom movement in whatever, terminology they thought of it uh, with whatever, um, to whatever extent they, they believed it could grow, it disappeared from China or went underground. Uh, it, it, it continued to be held by intellectuals here and there um, that were allowed to speak uh, sometimes, but as a movement, as a, as, a, as a movement, certainly as a mass movement, Tiananmen Square destroyed uh, the movement for freedom and the movement for liberty. Uh, in China. What is interesting is that China bans all discussions of it. Uh, it does not teach it in schools. When, when you talk to young Chinese today and you mention Tiananmen Square, you will get a quizzical look from them. They have no idea what you are talking about. They do not know it even happened. Never mind what happened and how many people died. Uh, it has been wiped from the history books. If you remember the Hong Kong uh, liberty movement, the Hong Kong demonstrations, uh, many of them were focused around the commemoration of Tiananmen Square uh, in, in years past, when people were arrested, when uh, such um, commemorations were banned by the Chinese government and the students in Hong Kong went out into the streets in spite of that. Well, even that now is finished. There were no commemorations in Hong Kong, or at least none with any numbers. Um, at this time, uh, this year, uh, uh, the Chinese government have a complete grip 
on Hong Kong, there are no uh, demonstrations, there are no commemorations. Uh, hopefully, many of the people who did not get arrested by the Chinese are not sitting today in jail uh, from, uh, the, from the Hong Kong demonstrations. Hopefully, many of them are, um, have escaped Hong Kong, uh, uh, maybe in Taiwan, in Singapore, in Canada, in, um, in um, UK. One of the great moral travesties is that the United States did not open its doors to refugees from Hong Kong. Many of the Tiananmen Square young people managed to escape. Many of the Chinese living today um, who are older, you know, this was 1989, so 33 years ago, many of the 50-something-year-old Chinese people who have been living in the United States since the early 1990s, maybe, many of those young, uh, many of those people, if you ask them, uh, they were part of the Tiananmen Square uh, attempt uh, at, at bringing more freedom and liberty to China. And they gave up afterwards, and many of them escaped to the West, uh, emigrated to the West, uh, went to school in the West, stayed here, did not want to go back to China because of what had happened on that horrific day. The tank man, uh, you remember tank man, the man who stood in front of the tank, daring it to run him over, um, trying to appeal to the soldiers, after all, you're Chinese, we're Chinese, what are you doing? Who, who, you're really going to really kill, kill us? Well, the tank man actually survived Tiananmen Square and is rumored to be living in Taiwan, kind of underground, uh, changed his name, fearful of, uh, of the Chinese government finding him and killing him. So uh, incredible bravery by the tank man, but incredibly bravery, I'd say, by those students who, who knew there was a, a very high probability that the Chinese central government would not let them get away with what they got away with, not let them demonstrate for weeks, uh, days, weeks, uh, they were in the square for a very long time. Uh, and it's only when uh, Deng Xiaoping realized that uh, there, was, there was no way to negotiate, uh, there was no, uh, they demanded compromises he was not willing to provide, and that they would not just go home, that, that all the pressure put on them, the threats did not work, that the only way to stop them, the only way for the Chinese Communist government to maintain one-party rule was to actually inflict the kind of violence uh, that was inflicted in Tiananmen. So Deng Xiaoping, in spite of doing many good things for China, uh, starting in 1978 when he became kind of the leader um, and, and in, until his death, really, and in spite of liberating much of the economy and in spite of allowing certain level of freedom, both, uh, a lot of freedom economically and some political freedom. Uh, his, his hands and his legacy uh, will always be tainted uh, by the blood he shed that day, 33 years ago. Um, I mean, he also has a lot to pay for the sins of being Mao Zedong's right-hand man uh, during much of um, Mao's rule over China. So it's, it's not that he, um, that he was a good guy always. He was a bad guy who turned pragmatic, semi-good guy, who then in Tiananmen Square ref manifested itself as the bad guy and then returned to his kind of more pragmatic good guy afterwards. Um, a lot of blood on Deng Xiaoping's hands, a lot of blood on those Chinese soldiers' hands, a lot of blood on the generals who went along and the other party members who went along with it. Um, unforgivable. I think, uh, I think it'll go down in Chinese history as a dark black day. I think one day, one day, and I'm convinced this day will come when China is a free country, one day when China is indeed a country uh, that celebrates uh, freedom, capitalism, individualism, uh, this will be one of the darkest days. This will be remembered as, uh, as, as, as a, uh, for the courage of the young people who are there and for the cowardice and the evil of the people who uh, unleashed the violence on them. So uh, my thoughts uh, go out to, the, to the, 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 the people of China who've kept the flame of liberty alive, the people of China who still fight for that liberty. My thoughts go out to the people uh, who lost family members that day and to the survivors, to all the students who demonstrated and who survived that day, uh, hopefully, hopefully some of you 
we'll see a, uh, a, a better China. It's not heading in the right direction right now, but, but maybe that'll be a catalyst. Maybe that'll be a catalyst to uh, a, a renewed liberty movement in, um, uh, in China. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content, and of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.